Welcome to the weekly market update of Softwaregic Stock Brokers. In the holiday shortened four days trading week, the CSA witnessed a downward trend due to price drops in index heavy counters, while somewhat recovering on the last day. The All Share Price Index declined by 100.5 points to close at 12,762.6, and the S&P SL20 Index also fell by 46.8 points to close the week at. 4330.8 Broader market total turnover for the week reached over 32 billion. The main contributors were Expolanka Holdings, Brown's Investments and the Sophrogic Group of Companies namely Sophrogic Life Insurance, Sophrogic Capital and Sophrogic Holdings. The 12 month average daily turnover stood at 4720.4 million while the total volume traded for the week was 1,162 million shares. Inflation rises to 14.2% in January, food inflation up to 25%. According to Colombo Consumer Price Index, data released by the Department of Census and Statistics, the year-on-year -year food inflation increased to 25%, up from 22.1% in December, and the year-on-year -year inflation of non-food group increased to 9.2% in January 2022 from 7.5% in December 2021. Power Crisis Power Ministry to purchase 15,000 tons fuel from Lanka IUC. PU CSL Power Awards 31 billion economic loss. Cabinet nod to buy 450,000 barrels of crude oil on six month credit from Cyprus firm. More delay in purchasing of private sector power. Sri Lanka India signed 500 million deal for purchase of petroleum products. Sri Lanka debt restructuring. Government open to discuss with all restructured debt. Sri Lanka says technical advice from IMF. Basil to visit India in mid February for 1 billion loan in research soon. Corporate earnings. KMR's latest results reflect resilience despite challenges. Third quarter revenue up 22% to 21 billion, earnings up 20.4% to 1.3 billion. First nine months revenue up 20.5% to 57.7 billion, profit from continuing operations up 8.7% to 3.5 billion. Rising commodity and raw material prices, global supply chain disruptions, import restrictions restrictions and forex liquidity exert pressure on profitability margins. Home and personal care bids Bangladesh sees double-digit cumulative revenue and profitability growth. Urges government to lay out a strategy for equitable allocation of buyback on local pharmaceutical manufacturers to exist from pharmaceuticals JV in Myanmar. TJ Lanka 9 month revenue up 64% to rupees 36.1 billion. Net profit improves by 23% to rupees 1.7 billion with higher productivity reducing impact of rising raw material costs. Improved demand from the region and enhanced capacity have helped TJ Lanka PLC to post group revenue of 36.1 billion for the 9 months ending 31st December 2021 and record strong top-line growth of 64% over the corresponding period of the previous year. Jack records highest ever had earned export revenue growth of 317%. Group had up by 232% to 770 million. TDM had rupees 1,102 million. Total revenue up by 72%. Company GP maintained about 30%. Exports revenue increased from 9% to 22% of total revenue. SDF reports 48% PAC growth post IPO. These are the crossings for the week. Company news and highlights LB Finance to buy 64.63% of multi finance for 400, 400 million. Colombo Dockyard signs two firm vessels plus two options contracts to build CSOVS for wind farm operations. NBFI getting nimbler. 
CBSL announces approval for acquisition and or amalgamation by six finance companies. Nine firms have infused fresh capital of over 12 billion. Sri Lanka's Kalin Tires to invest 3.2 billion expand radial tire capacity. Aiken Spence Partners, AHK Sri Lanka to promote business opportunities in key industries. Moving on to the technicals, the All Share Price Index closed the week red but managed to recover most of its losses which occurred within the week. We mentioned on our last week's recap that over the coming weeks, the overall price index would most likely favour the more conservative investors. We continue to hold on that thesis into next week until prices stabilise around this range. Looking at the chart, we mentioned in one of our previous recaps that the 10-week moving average is a key level to hold. Rightly so, the bias did emerge at that level. Over the past two years, every time price pulled back towards the moving average, we have seen a period of consolidation of roughly two weeks before the index starts rallying again. That being said, while the index is a good measure of the overall market direction, investors would be better off treating each stock on its own merit.